as you can see on this end of the key rail, um, this is probably the worst area, but the, the, the pins on the front rail are really pretty badly corroded. Um, these ones on the end, I haven't tried going over with steel wool yet. So you can see the bottom quarter inch or so of these pins has a lot of that corrosion. Uh, what might not show up so well in the video is actually how pitted and uh, damaged these pins are. And so I think after trying to go through and polish these and after trying to soda blast uh, this key rail assembly and seeing still how much staining and um, remnants from the, the mouse nest that was in my key uh, keyboard area, I think what I'm going to do is the next course of action is actually to pull all these pins out. Um, and I think I'm going to go through the process to actually replace these pins with new ones um, that will fix the pitting and the corrosion issues. As If I scroll down here you can see some of these pins that I have gone through and tried to polish and clean up. Uh, going through with the steel wool has actually removed the plating off of these pins and they're down to kind of the base nickel meaning that they're probably just going to corrode even faster the next time. So getting new pins for this is going to be uh, going to be important I think to get the restoration the way I would like it, right? I don't necessarily just want to put a band-aid on this. I want this to be done right. <clears throat> and then also pulling these pins out will give me an opportunity to sand this wood back down. Uh, sand the wood back down and get it clean again. So that's really um, I think that's the plan for today is I'm going to take these pins, I'm going to put them in a bag, I'm going to save them for now. I've taken some measurements on them, but um, I'm going to save these pins and come back to them once they're, um, I guess, you know, just, just in case for measurements and whatnot. I'll save the pins, um, but the plan is to get new pins to replace these um, that are going to be clean and free of corrosion. Let's see if I can scoot over here to the balance rail pins as well. It's a very similar story. You can see the tops of these pins have a lot of corrosion on them and those are actually where the key bushings are for the balance rail, uh, like the key buttons. So what I found when I tried to take the keys out is the corrosion on top almost acted like a wedge that was trying to hold the keys in. And I can polish it clean again if I come down here a little bit. You know, these pins have been polished a lot more, uh, but you can still see the discoloration where the plating is worn. Uh, a lot of the corrosion on top is worn off, but in reality these pins are just going to degrade faster. So replacing these all I think is going to be the way to go. So I'll cut back to a wide view and I'll, I'll show you what I do to pull these out. So I thought I would get a little bit closer and show you the technique I'm going to use to remove these pins. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pair of vice grips, and it's kind of already set, but I'll, I'll adjust it here. Um, what I'll do is I'll come down through here, and the keys slide on the sides of the pin, this side and this side. So when I take these off, even on the balance, even though these are round, the keys are really at the top, they're going on the sides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the vice grip just on the top of the pin here. These will mar them a little bit, just a hair tighter, but just enough to get a little bit of a grip on it. And then what I'm going to do is, I'll tighten this a little bit more. Once I get it where I want it, basically, I'll kind of twist the pins just a hair as I'm pulling, and I'll try to pull straight out so that I don't round or take that hole out of round. So it doesn't take a lot of force, they're just a little bit of a press fit in there. But if you get a grip on those, you can go through and pull them out. So I'll come through here and do a few more. Pretty straightforward. And I'm not pulling with a lot of force. I could really yank on these. I'm just kind of giving a consistent, maybe moderate force as I'm pulling. 
it's really just with my fingertips and I'm letting it walk up on its own so I'll go down the line here and then pull all these out I'll do the same thing for the balance rail pins I'll probably set that to a little bit of a time lapse just so you guys don't have to watch every little bit of this this one's a little firmer there we go so yeah I'll go through and pull the rest of them out Get ready to speed up So as you can see, that process is fairly straightforward. I'm um, just going out and taking all the pins out. Uh, didn't take too long. I mean, it takes a little while just because of the sheer number of pins, but uh, overall it wasn't too bad. Uh, now I don't plan on reusing those pins, so I wasn't too concerned about damaging them. Although I was careful to try to not to put on more pressure than necessary with the vice grips and to grip the pins um, on the opposite surfaces perpendicular surfaces to what the key bushings would slide on uh, just in case for some reason I had to use those um, again that's not really the plan and I, I don't expect that will be but never hurts to hold on to these old parts um, just in case uh, you never know um, you know just in case you would need them so uh, so I kept them in the bag uh, the next step I really want to start working on is uh, starting to sand I got a lot of the soda blasting done which took a lot of the surface grit off but there's still quite a bit of staining, so uh, the next step is I'm going to start to go through with some sandpaper and sand down the rails to try to get them clean. I've been standing down on this, um, but there's still some deep stains in the wood. 
uh, that really, I think, are going to be a challenge to staying out. I've been doing a little bit of research and saw that uh, there's a product called oxalic acid uh, that is used a lot of times to get water stains and uh, you know other type of liquid stains and urine stains out of wood, especially like hardwood floors and things like that. Uh, so I'm going to try that out and see if applying some of that will actually uh, maybe lift these stains out of the wood and prevent me from having to sand this down and really have to you know take away a whole bunch of material to try to get these stains out. So. I've got some of that. I'm going to mix it up and try it, um, and we'll we'll see if that helps at all. This is the oxalic acid that I bought. I uh, got a little bit of it. It's a small container. Uh, wood bleach is what it's called by this brand, but it's you can see the ingredient there. It just says oxalic acid. Uh, so you mix this mix this with water, and the ratios are on the back. Uh, I don't need as much as it calls for, so I'm going to just try to mix it in this little cup of water at a much, much more uh, smaller scale. But I'm gonna mix this up and supposedly if you just let it soak on the wood, it will take the stains away. So that's, uh, that's what I'm hoping for. So I mixed up the oxalic acid with water and I applied it all over this key rail um, pretty liberally. And then I actually went through with the shop towels and placed them over the areas that were especially stained and put a little bit more on there so that it can sit without running off. Um, so I'll let it go for a while and I'll check it, check back on it in 15 minutes or so. And periodically here as I'm doing other stuff in the, in the garage, we'll see if it actually does lift those stains out. So here I just checked on this again. Um, I probably let the acid sit on there for about an hour. Um, I did a little bit of looking, uh, as it was sitting. I don't think I applied it right. I think my mixture was a little bit too diluted as well as uh, it was just a little bit, uh, or you're supposed to really use hot water for that, and I didn't use hot water, I just used cold water out of the tap. And so um, I'm not sure exactly how effective it'll be. Uh, obviously the area is still wet. It's been, it probably sat on there for about an hour, an hour or so, and then I let it set for another hour, hour and a half. Um, I've been in the garage doing stuff, so it's just been drying out. You can still see there's quite a bit of moisture there from the water and the acid mixture. Although it does look, in these areas that are dry, it does look quite a bit cleaner. Um, so I'll check in again once it completely dries. You can see this wood in general is still pretty wet uh, from the water. But those dry spots are looking, they really are looking pretty clean. Um, I think I'm going to end up doing another application especially in some of these other areas are a little bit more stained. Uh, for instance, I think here in the middle. Uh, yeah, here it is. Uh, there's a little bit of a stain there in that area. So we'll try to get that out. Uh, we'll see how well it works over here once everything dries. So I'll let this sit probably for the rest of the afternoon and check on it again. And maybe if it's dried out later tonight, maybe I'll go through and do a second uh, application of it with hot water and a much more uh, concentrated mixture. I only put in maybe about a teaspoon to about a cup's worth of water. And from what I've seen, uh, that's, that's uh, I could go more aggressive with it. So that's what I'll try. So this is after the coat dried. Um, I'd say it's not perfect, but it's probably about 200 times better than what it was. Um, and I, I didn't use hot water and I didn't use the correct mix ratio. I think if I fix those and do a second coat, this thing will look almost as good as new. And this was no sanding in between. This is just letting the uh, oxa oxalic acid dry. So I, that's pretty sweet. So this is the key rail assembly after um, really the second and heavy coat of the oxalic acid. Um, it really did a good job. I've gone through and I've just kind of lightly dusted it off and sanded it off a little bit. And that's mostly just to get the acid crystals off of there. Uh, but as you can see, that staining is almost 100% gone now. Uh, so I'm really happy with where it's at. I'm not probably going to do any more uh, coats of this. I think at this point I'm just going to go through because there's still quite a bit of dust left um, with some water and maybe even some water with like baking soda in it to try to neutralize the acid a little bit and rinse it off and get it clean again uh, so that I can let everything dry out a final time 
<clears throat> and then have it be ready for use going forward. So yeah, I'm super happy with how this turned out. So I guess I just wanted to close the loop. Uh, it's been a couple days since the last recording I did. Um, and I did go through and use the oxalic acid on this area so that we could uh, uh, really see how that cleaned up. And it did a little bit of work, um, but it didn't do as much as I thought. I think primarily because I had put the uh, orange oil on there, it had soaked into the wood a little bit and it was creating a barrier for the oxalic acid. Uh, so what you see here is, is probably the best it's looked. Um, and the reason it looks this good is because I actually went through and took uh, my sander, my palm sander with some 100 grit paper and just really went to town to try to uh, sand out any of the darkness uh, and get back down to fresh wood. And so that's what I did um, and it really turned out really nice. Uh, you can see in this picture, um, you know, what, what this looks like and how clean it is. Um, I'll pop up here on the screen kind of a couple before pictures so you can really get a chance to see what this thing looked like, um, you know, when essentially with what the mouse nest had done to it. So um, as you can see, this really just looks great. Uh, I'm super happy with how it turned out. And also the smell now is completely gone. Uh, so if I, if I get right up close to it, it actually smells like, you know, fresh wood from a wood shop rather than, uh, you know, standing within the same garage stall here and just kind of getting that uh, whiff of mouse nest smell that was that was uh, very strong with this piano before that. So like I said, I'm super happy with how this turned out. I think uh, really this is a good point to leave off on uh, cleaning up the keybed area. Uh, at this point, um, it's really gonna start probably rebuilding the keybed with new pins and new felts. Uh, the keys are uh, are also cleaned off and so those are at the point where I can start working on the key tops and getting those back in ready to go. Um, bushings and things like that will come on the keys as well so um, I'm really looking forward to this area. I know starting off on this piano there's obviously there's a mountain of work to do. Um, picking one area and kind of focusing on that has helped um, you know kind of keep me on track so working on the keys um, and getting this key bed clean you know, that's something here that, you know, is a relatively straightforward task. There's obviously lots of work involved, but it's been something that's probably, uh, you know, been a good area to start, at least for uh, for me on this piano. Um, so that's, that's where I left off here. Um, I'll do one more cut, and when I come back, I'll have the key rail uh, assembly sitting there just so you can get a good final final view of what that looks like now that it's cleaned up. Okay, so I just set the key rail in there. It's not screwed down or anything, but it's sitting in place. Um, so again, you know, what a what a dramatic difference from where it was before. It really shows the difference, how clean it is now. And I'll, I'll pop up another <laughs> before picture just so you can see, because this is really the state it was in. Um, this side over here, this was really the worst. Uh, this is where I found the mouse skeletons, and this seemed to be the side that they had made their permanent nest in. The other side still had uh, all sorts of debris in it, but it wasn't really didn't really seem where it was their permanent residence. So this is uh, this is considerably better than what it was. So there you go.